Hi guys, it's Mr. Pollock Biology here again with another synoptic essay video for the Unit 5 essay, the 25 mark beast that lurks at the end of your A2 exams. In this video, I want to talk about how, as an examiner, the essay is marked. So let's get started. There's four sections that you need to worry about. Scientific content, first of all, um, and this is a mark out of 16. Now, it's kind of a strange mark, this, because there's only a couple of marks you can actually get. You can't get a mark of 15, for example, which I'll explain in a second. Basically, the examiner is going to try and classify your essay into one of these five categories, starting at the top with exceptional, down to good, average, poor, and then unacceptable. The examiner does have an option to choose an intermediate grade if he feels, or an intermediate mark if he feels that your essay falls somewhere between exceptional and good. He can give you 14, for example, or between good and average, he can give you 10. He can't give you 15, he can't give you 13, he can't give you 11, he can't give you 9. He can't give you five, he can't give you seven, he can't give you three, he can't give you one. He can only go halfway between these numbers. The reason for that is to make marking a little bit easier and to try and minimize the amount of, of, of variation in how different people mark. So if your essay is classed as exceptional, that means that all of the content that you have included is high quality, it's accurate, it indicates that you've got a good understanding of all the topics that have been studied at a S and a 2 level, and it should also include significant reference to stuff that you haven't studied at A level, but shows that you've read beyond the specification. So this can be anything. This can be you know naming an enzyme in the light dependent re uh, the light uh, independent reaction. Uh, it can be linking to something you've read about disease. If you're a medic, you'll have done quite a bit of extra reading. If you've done an EPQ qualification, um, there's plenty of options there to talk about something that you're passionate about. So realistically, this is the perfect essay showing that you've got nothing wrong and that you've read around the subject. If your essay is classified as good. That means that the majority of your content is good and accurate, um, of a good quality, and shows that you've got a, a very good overall understanding of the topics that you've talked about. They will forgive minor errors in this. So little things, um, they will they will forgive. Uh, that's very small. Maybe uh, things like talking about two chemicals in the wrong order, perhaps in, in respiration maybe, or getting oxidation and reduction the wrong way around once. If you do that more than one time, you're looking at slipping into average, which is here. This means that most of the content that you've written about, so the majority, is an appropriate depth. It's not superficial. It shows that you've got a, an overall good understanding, but you've got consistent fundamental errors that pop up throughout the essay. Anything less than this, and we're looking at a poor scientific content essay, which means that it's really superficial, there's no real depth there. You've got the ideas about some basic principles, but as soon as you try and explain it in any more detail, you start to mess things up a little bit. So this is the sort of essay that someone could probably write after getting a B, an A, or an A star at GCSE. So nothing really A-level in content, but nothing particularly wrong either with the basics. And finally, if you really don't write anything useful, you're going to be marked as unacceptable which is superficial, wrong, and nothing of A-level standard whatsoever. We want to avoid that where possible. Realistically, most students should be hitting somewhere between 12, well, 10 and 12, really, um, if you've done pretty well throughout your, your AS and A2 course and you've retained a good amount of information. The examiner is also going to give you a mark for your breadth of knowledge, and that's a mark out of three. Um, on the mark scheme, they do specify a couple of topic areas that uh, they recommend that you talk about for essays. It's usually between three and four topic areas. So if you've hit all three or even four of those topic areas, um, then you're going to get the maximum mark of three here. Um, don't forget, this is something that you should have planned for. So in your essay plan, always identify different topic areas or different modules or unit areas that you're going to talk about from. Uh, two is if you've got a couple of key areas missing, so you might have missed out one topic that the examiner really thinks you should have included, or one of a selection of topics that the examiner thinks you should have included. Uh, one mark here means you've 
basically entirely focused your essay on one thing, and zero is completely and utterly irrelevant. So yeah, breadth of knowledge is really nice to pick up on, and you can do it with minimal effort. Just make sure you've included a topic um, from either each of the four units that you'll do exams on, or even if you've identified that topics can be broken down into areas like uh, like the cycles essay, there's ecological cycles, there's environmental cycles, there's biochemical cycles, there's physiological cycles. Um, any Anything where you're, you're taking information from different topic areas shows that you've got breadth of knowledge. The third area they're going to be looking at is relevance. And this is basically about how much of your content that you're writing about actually relates to the title of the essay. So if all of your content is relevant and you've not waffled and you've not gone off topic on a massive tangent about badges, then they're going to give you three. Mind you, badges is acceptable if you're talking about TB. So badges, comment, disregard. Uh, two means that some of the content they deem irrelevant. So you might have gone off on a minor tangent there. Uh, number one, most of the content totally relevant. And zero is the whole thing is just you've written about pancakes. I can't think of any link to biology with pancakes. So there we go. Three marks maximum for relevance. And that's the way the marks break down. Final section is quality of written communication, QWC, maximum mark of three here, and they're going to be looking at spelling, punctuation, and grammar, particularly the spelling of scientific vocabulary. They're also going to look at the way you structure your essay. Your essay should show that there's a nice, a nice mature written style to it with an, a clear introduction that's scientific and short. Each of the paragraphs should be linked and not just sporadically thrown together, and we don't need a conclusion. But for three marks, a good, mature, clear structure with excellent grammar and no spelling errors. For two marks, mostly scientific, most scientific spellings, they're going to be correct. They can forgive you one or two minor errors. One, your style is erratic. You're writing about random stuff as and when it comes to you. It's not clearly planned. There are spelling mistakes. And then zero is basically, if you haven't written enough, for them to judge your ability to use written language, then that's fine. I should remind you as well that this should all be written in prose. You can write, you can draw and sketch diagrams if you think they will help, if they add something, or you need to refer to a diagram. Um, but it all should be written in full sentences. I would avoid bullet points and numbered points like the plague. Full stops, capital letters, full written English. So how does this break down? And what advice would I give to people? Well. Scientific content, 16 marks, you want to be checking if your content is correct when you read through it. Ha ask yourself, have you demonstrated A-level knowledge throughout your entire essay? For the breadth, a good question you can ask yourself is, have you included topics from different units and different areas of study? That should say different, but some for some reason it says different, my apologies. Uh, relevance, you want to be asking, is everything I've written related to the title? And for QWC, have you double-checked spellings and scientific terminology? By that point, it's probably too late to rejig your entire essay, but it's worth double-checking spellings, particularly of biological words. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you found this useful. More videos on the essay coming up soon, hopefully.